Welcome once again to A Cup of Joe with, with Joe. Today's uh, topic is going to be uh, flow through assemblies. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, we went to a lot of effort back in the days to um, create a barrier for uh, airflow and also a barrier for vapor flow. So we had air barriers and vapor barriers, and I, of course, like to call them air control layers and vapor control layers. If we have a vapor control layer that is, in fact, a vapor barrier, and it's somewhere installed in the wall, obviously the wall can't dry through it in one direction. So if I have a vapor barrier in the middle of the wall, the wall can only dry from the vapor barrier in or from the vapor barrier out. In cold climates, the installation of vapor barriers on the inside meant that the wall could only dry to the outside. It couldn't dry to the inside, so therefore it couldn't dry to both sides. In the south, if I put my vapor barrier on the outside, the wall can only dry to the inside. It can't dry to the outside. Well, what if I had a way that I didn't need a vapor barrier at all if I slowed the vapor flow down and then had, a, in essence, a vapor throttle in the middle of the wall but allowed the moisture to go in both directions, wouldn't that be a benefit? And the answer is yes. What you can do is you can control condensation by having an airtight assembly that is vapor open in both directions. Now, it would be kind of neat to put that airtight layer on the outside of your wall and then cover the outside of that with a, another layer of insulation. If that layer of insulation is also vapor open and the insulation to the inside of that layer is vapor open, our vapor control layer is more or less thermally in the middle of the wall. It's also our air control layer and the wall can dry to the inside, to the outside, and go through in both directions, but not quickly, slowly. We would call that a flow-through assembly. Now we're talking about flow for vapor, not for air. So we want something that's airtight, but vapor open on both sides with a semi-vapor control layer in the middle, basically a vapor throttle at the air control layer. Well, how do we do claddings? Well, the claddings have to be back ventilated and drained. How do we deal with our interior finishes? We absolutely positively cannot install vinyl wall coverings. Well, what about perforated vinyl wall coverings? No, 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 no vinyl wall coverings. If you want a wall covering, make it a fabric wall covering. Um, no epoxy paints. No oil-based or alkyd paints, only latex finishes, latex coatings, or textured coatings that are able to breathe. So you don't want a vapor barrier or vapor control layer on the inside. You don't want one on the outside. You want a vapor throttle in the middle. You want vapor open insulation to the inside of that and to the outside of that. And that way we would call that a flow through assembly. Well, how about how about a roof? Can we have a flow through assembly in a roof? And the answer is, well, absolutely. We just simply take the best technology for a wall and lean it on a slope. Again, your roof cladding is going to have to be back ventilated and drained. And now the moisture can vent into that space by diffusion and get out. It can also dry in. Can we have a vapor flow through assembly and a slab? No. So I can do walls, I can do roofs, but I can't do slabs. Um, you know, two out of three ain't bad. I think Meatloaf said that once. With that, we'll see you again.